the work streams on the uh, y axis and the phases on the x axis then each cell within each of uh, in this matrix will represent an activity that has to be done in the project as part of a certain work stream within a particular project phase why the work stream is important is because this primarily tells you the kind of resources who are going to play a part in this whole process if we can effectively put the entire list of conversion tasks into the right cell in the matrix then the conversion is already well begun so this is the first step for us to understand what are all the tasks that are available that are that have to be executed and also when it should be executed and by whom primarily the work streams that you see up here are the project management uh, tasks the solution adoption the design and configuration the analytics the custom code adaptation testing integration with third party systems system and data migration meaning the system the new hardware the operating system database and then the migration of the data and then the technical architecture and infrastructure where you would discuss uh, would have to uh, decide on the deployment options whether you're going to buy the uh, hardware keep it on premise or you're going to uh, use uh, put it in a data center with uh, remote infrastructure management or possibly use uh, cloud providers for the same and then you transition to operations going a little deeper into these work streams the project management primarily all the project and quality management tasks the organization organizational change management and the enablement of the project team themselves so the project team at the of the customers uh, location and then the solution adoption here is where you create the training strategy the learning paths and the enablement of the end users to be ready to use the S converted s4 system under design and configuration the typical activities include the identification and design of the functional changes based on multiple fit gap workshops that you run with the, with the it and the business and this this becomes critical because it's based on this the solution adoption has to happen and then analytics analytics any customer would currently be reporting data from ecc and possibly other systems but with s4 you have the embedded analytics uh, features so you should you should go relook all your uh, reporting uh, methodologies and see if those reports can be done from s4 directly with respect to custom core custom core over the years we would have developed custom core on ecc in abap and now a lot of change might have to happen on the ecc custom core to make it adaptable to s4 hana and also to the hana database i would go into a lot more detail on how this custom code and uh, custom code adaptation is done and the tools that go with that and then on the technical architecture and uh, technical architecture and the infrastructure early on in the project we have to understand what are our deployment options and how or the sizing and where we deploy and how we are going to manage the whole thing with respect to testing this cover First, the identification of the test cases, the test scenarios, the planning, and the execution as well. So the tests could include smoke tests, integration tests, regression tests, user acceptance tests, and performance tests. So if you look at it, each of these tests are are run by a different set of people, and the exit criteria for all, each of these would be very different. So, but all these will have to be plugged into the right. time in the project after each system conversion so so that we can progress to the final uh, conversion of the production system with a lot more confidence from our most recent experience we suggest that you run extensive performance tests on the production hardware with full load including the final hardware setup like in your final production system you would have replication and once you go live you would have a lot of data that has to sync up with the other reporting systems so unless you run an end to end test of your business transactions with all the right kind of scenario you would be caught unaware about the performance bottlenecks that you might uh, face and then with respect to the integration work stream this primarily is how you integrate the converted s4 uh, environment into your third party systems this could also include the sap cloud platform if you intend to develop more applications on sap and then the system data system and data migration 
This primarily is how you set up each of your S4 landscape systems, the dirt, QA, prod, how you take copies from the production and how you execute your uh, S4 conversion on each of these systems and iterate into the final set of activities that you would do in production in a specified window. And when this is done multiple times, then you, when you run your production system, it goes smooth and it fits perfectly into the plan downtime window. Uh, what we've seen is the multiple iterations is really important. And then when you build your development system and your QA system, it is recommended that you wipe out, no, freeze all your development, take, take out all the open developments so you can look at them later and uh, overwrite your product, uh, development system with copies of production. Why you would do this? Primarily, it helps you in two ways. Once you've gone live, your development and QA system are very close to your production system. So your support becomes a lot easier. And the second reason is each time you do a mock run, you're running the mock run on a copy of production. And then when you finally do your production run, the only difference that you see in production is the change in the custom uh, in the transaction data that has happened in between. So this gives you a very good uh, way of doing the conversion. So you don't hit against any uh, unknown errors in the last phase. And the final, the transition to operations. Why that's important is now possibly if you're not on suite on HANA, then you would have to train your IT operations and the support team to be able to handle HANA, the HANA database itself. And then you, you will have to uh, make sure you have the right tools to support this.